Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Casey White and Vicki White? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the alleged crime, then offer my analysis. Casey Cole White was raised in Leicester, Alabama. He played football in high school. His neighbors described him as quiet and polite, but said he was missing a moral checkpoint. According to his attorneys, Casey has an extensive mental health history. In 2010, Casey pleaded guilty to attacking a male relative with an axe handle. He was sentenced to six years in prison. Evidently, he did not serve all six years because on December 2, 2015, Casey went on a crime spree. He committed a home invasion, two carjackings, and multiple shootings in Alabama and Tennessee. In what appears to be a jealous rage, he tried to murder his ex-girlfriend and kidnap her two roommates. He was not successful in killing any people, but he did kill a dog during the attack. He was found guilty of nine charges, including attempted murder, and sentenced to 75 years in prison. Casey would later say that if he was ever released from prison, he would kill his ex-girlfriend. It looks like Casey needs to polish his parole board speech a little bit. About two months earlier, on October 23, 2015, a 58-year-old woman named Connie Jane Ridgway was found dead in her home in Rogersville, Alabama. She had been killed in what appeared to be a home invasion. The police did not know who committed the murder. In September of 2020, Casey White contacted the police to talk about the murder. According to the police, Casey confessed to murdering Connie Ridgway, saying that he was paid to commit the homicide. He was charged with capital murder during a first-degree burglary. Casey was transferred to the Lauderdale County Detention Center to await trial for the charge. He would later recant his confession. The authorities said that there was evidence that corroborated the burglary portion of his story, but not the murder part. Either way, Casey was still going to trial. A woman named Vicki Sue White worked at the detention center as an assistant director of corrections. Her main job was transporting prisoners. Casey White and Vicki White have the same last name, but they are not related. Vicki is 18 years older than Casey. Not long after Casey's arrival at the detention center, he was returned to prison because officials determined he was planning an escape. He was going to use a shank to hold someone hostage. Vicky called Casey several times when he was back in prison. The prison was about two hours south of the detention center. Vicky never visited Casey in person in that prison. Casey was returned to the Lauderdale County Detention Center in March of 2021 for a mental health evaluation. Therefore, Casey and Vicky were able to see each other in person again. Casey remained there for four months before being returned to prison. Vicky once again called him frequently when he was in prison. On February 25, 2022, Casey was once again transferred to the detention center. The plan was for Casey to remain there until his trial was over. Vicky supplied Casey with additional food as well as other privileges. Some of the other inmates were envious. Vicky scheduled her retirement for April 29, 2022. She sold her house on April 18 for $95,550, which was below market value. She purchased a 2007 Ford Edge and parked it in a mall parking lot not far from the jail. I'm guessing that when Vicky went to buy the vehicle, the dealership didn't have a Ford Escape available. If she had only purchased a Ford Rethink your life choices, maybe this story would have turned out differently. To be fair, that's a very unpopular model these days. Now moving to the timeline of the alleged crime. On April 29, 2022, at 9.41 a.m., 56-year-old Vicki White informed other officials at the jail that she was going to transport 38-year-old Casey White to the courthouse for a mental health evaluation. She said that she was going to an urgent care center after dropping him off because she was not feeling well. 
There was no mental health evaluation scheduled at the courthouse. The staff at the prison realized that Vicki was violating protocol by transporting the prisoner alone, but did nothing to stop her. At 9.49 a.m., Vicki's cruiser was captured on surveillance video at an intersection about a half mile away from the shopping center where the Ford Edge was parked. Nobody at the jail figured out that anything was wrong until about 3.30 p.m. They could not get a hold of Vicki, and they noticed that Casey never came back to the jail. Vicki's cruiser was found abandoned not long after this. Vicki White was charged with permitting or facilitating escape in the first degree. At the time making this video, Casey and Vicki are still on the run, enjoying their dream life together. The authorities hope that Casey and Vicki will be easy to spot. Casey is 6 foot 9 and is about 330 pounds. Vicky is 5 foot 5 and weighs about 145 pounds. She has what the authorities referred to as a waddling gait. Now moving to my analysis. When this incident was first reported, the authorities believed that Casey White escaped without Vicky White's help, like maybe she was the victim. Soon, the police realized that Vicky almost certainly helped Casey to escape. At no point did anyone assume that Vicky kidnapped Casey, although if she did, that would be an amazing story. This brings me to the question, why would Vicky give up everything to be with Casey, especially considering this situation will probably not end well? Here is what may have happened in this case. This is just a theory, my opinion. After many years of working in the jail, Vicky felt as though her career was not really going anywhere. She was unfulfilled at work, and her romantic life wasn't any better. She spent most of her time transporting prisoners. Over time, she started to empathize with them. She listened to their stories about being innocent and came to believe them. When Vicky first encountered Casey White, she was strongly physically attracted to him. She knew that they shouldn't be together, but she let the fantasy grow anyway. Vicky invested in the relationship. Casey was probably very charming. He would laugh at all Vicky's prison guard jokes. He didn't know where the relationship would go, but he also didn't have many other romantic options. Vicky was able to rationalize the fact that Casey was a prisoner who had confessed to murder. She started thinking to herself, perhaps Casey's confession was false. Maybe he was just misunderstood. Maybe he was manipulated into committing murder. Perhaps he was framed by the police. If he only had the right romantic partner, he could turn his life around. Maybe she could be that love interest, the one who saves him. Each time Casey was returned to the prison, Vicky was upset. She did not want to be apart from him. She couldn't stop thinking about their amazing love. She called him at the prison, and eventually they started planning an escape. Vicky knew that Casey would be transferred back to the jail for his trial. She understood that it didn't matter if Casey recanted his confession, because whether he was found guilty or not guilty, he was still serving 75 years in prison. Vicky knew that she needed to act if she was going to be with her one true love. She put the escape plan in motion. She sold her house and bought a vehicle. She probably prepared in other ways as well. Her senior status at the jail meant that she would not be questioned for transporting a dangerous prisoner by herself. She could get away with doing that. As the time of the escape approached, both Vicky and Casey felt excited, but they knew they had to contain their emotions. They needed to act in a non-suspicious manner. Vicky managed to pull off her plan perfectly, but failed to hide her sheriff's vehicle in one of Lauderdale County's many rural areas. Even still, she was able to get a pretty good head start on the authorities. Certainly enough time to switch out of the Ford Edge into another vehicle. Vicky and Casey probably drove to a rural area where there is a reduced risk of being spotted. Moving to the next question, does Casey represent a danger to Vicky? I think it stands to reason that Casey represents a danger to anyone. He has an extensive criminal history, and it's believed that he has access to a rifle, a shotgun, and a few pistols. In addition, Casey's alleged murder victim was a 58-year-old woman. Vicky is a 56-year-old woman. It doesn't seem like a stretch to believe that he would be willing and able to kill her. In order to accurately assess the risk that Casey presents to Vicky, it would be important to know what prompted him to violence in the past. 
It appears as though his motive for attacking his ex-girlfriend was jealousy, which should not be a problem if he is alone with Vicky in some rural area. I would guess that Casey, at least initially, would be reluctant to cause trouble. He is probably thrilled just to be free, but eventually he will return to his old habits, including being aggressive. Now moving to my final thoughts. I would imagine that over time, Vicky is going to start to realize that she made a terrible mistake. She will start looking at Casey and seeing a dangerous criminal as opposed to an exciting lover. The 10 years in prison that Vicky is facing will start to look appealing the more time she spends with Casey. Similarly, Casey will probably start to devalue Vicky over time. It's a question of who will get devalued faster. Whoever gets devalued faster is the one who is in the most danger. I think this case exemplifies the ability for feelings of love and the desire for sex to distort thinking. These forces can outweigh any consequences. At some point, the consequences don't even matter. The person only focuses on the feelings of sexual attraction. There are only a few types of love more exciting than prison escape love, but also a few types more dangerous. One can only hope that Vicki White develops insight quickly enough to save herself from her newfound lover. Those are my thoughts in the case of Casey White and Vicki White. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be as exciting as prison escape love. Thanks for watching.